Keith, you've had a couple of practices this month. Like, how in the world are you able to get ready for a conference game on Wednesday? Well, I try not to think about it. That's number one. Um, and I know it's going to be a two-week process to really get our team where we want to get them. So that's the second thing. But with the, the, the third thing is, is I get paid to win games regardless of the circumstances. So it's kind of how I view it. How do you coach a, coach a team that hasn't played a game since December 2nd? I'm not, I'm not even, Jerry, worried so much worried about not playing games, but just the lack of practice. You know, between the two things, it's difficult. I mean, but like I said many times before, nobody cares. All they care about at the end of the year is who won that game and who won that game and what your record is. So, look, just got to put our big boy pants on and compete. And simple as that. Like, and then we'll have to we'll have to do it a little differently. We, you know, we'll have to play shorter intervals for sure. You know, play more people for sure. And. Uh, you know, simple as that. Keith, are you when gonna have to hold practicing, the Keith? Hold on, I missed that. When did you resume practicing? We came back the uh, 26th, the evening of the 26th. It's like 7.30 in the evening. Will everybody be available for the game? Uh, I'm a knock. We've been negative since we've been back. Our last five tests have been negative, so hopefully. Coach. Oh, yeah, we won't be full strength because Mikey Bakelge is out with a stress fracture. Okay, thank you. But so. Coach, how do you prepare for a game when basically for the first time in sports, every single thing is an actual game time decision? Because you don't know what the results are going to be like. It's truly game time decision. How do you prepare for that? You Just like you normally would for any game, right? And then. Whatever happens, happens. You can't control that. So I do think it's harder for people like me that are old and stuck in their ways and used to structure and and doing things the way they, they've done it for years. So I've had to be flexible and adjust as to how I do things. Keith, considering the opponent and uh, just what you've gone through this month as a team, where do you rank this as uh, on the highest challenges you've had to face as a head coach? Well, I've had a lot of challenges. I mean, uh, I mean, certainly it won't be easy. They're a good team. They've played a lot of games. They've got an experienced team. They've got a great coach. They've got a great fan base who won't be there. That's one good thing. Um, so, I mean, it, it won't be easy, but it never is when you go to St. Louis or you go to VCU or you go to Dayton or any of those places. So, so I, I think it'll be one of the harder, harder deals, but Again, like we can't make any excuses. We just, we have to figure out a way to win. You're going up against a really good backcourt um, in particularly Jordan Goodwin, one of the better guards in the country. Um, when you prepare for him, do you prepare for him similar to the way you guys prepared for Miller from Little Rock? Well, they're different players. I mean, Not Little Rock Greensboro. Yeah. I mean, they're different. They're different style players. Like Jordan Goodwin is like a tough bruising, uh, all around winning strong. He's like a power forward in a point guard body. Mm. So Miller's more like an athletic jumping jack, but they're both really good players in their own way. Uh, a lot of respect for, for Goodwin and, and their team as a whole. So we've been fortunate enough to do a decent job on him the last couple of times we've played him. But every game's a mutually exclusive event, as we all know. Coach, what's your message to your guys kind of throughout all this? Because I'm sure there's going to be some sense of frustration when they're getting out there for the first time and, you know, a little while without having that, those practices that you mentioned. And, you know, there's going to be that sense of we want to win, we want to do this, but at the same time understanding that, you know, we haven't had a lot of time that other teams have. I, you know, I was just worried about just the grind of it all mentally, you know, no, like, thank goodness most of them were able to go home for Christmas, although we had some of them in quarantine. Um, just the grind of not playing games, of, you know, not being around normal students, you know, not having a real college experience. Every team's going to react differently to that, 
you know, and uh, so, so there's going to be some people that have really good years through it. And then there's going to be other people that you're going to say, well, why weren't they any good this year? So like, that's, that's the hard part of it all really. Like it's not even a real year the way I view it, but, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the end of the season, it's going to be viewed as a real year. Coach, um, Coach Capel over at Pitt talked about a couple weeks ago about the, I guess, the guise of amateurism within the NCAA. Did you, one, did you hear those comments too? Like, how did you kind of feel about that? And what do you kind of see all this as, particularly with the way you guys have to quarantine and be bubbled? Well, I agree with Coach on that. Like, uh, they are amateurs. They don't make what professionals make. Uh, there's a lot of risk. Um, I don't know whether the answer is we shouldn't play or we should should play. I really don't know the answer. I don't know if we did the right thing or the wrong thing. I'm not smart enough for that. I think most of the kids want to play. Um, but he's right when he says it feels kind of funny. Because it does. I mean, it feels kind of funny. Like that's a, That's a very, very true statement. How do you feel... When do you feel you'll know if, it, if this season was worth it? If no one, if no one, ha if we have no catastrophic events and these kids stay healthy and we don't have any issues with somebody, God forbid, having a huge issue or have to be hospitalized. Hey coach, this is Stu Durando in St. Louis. Um, so between your last game and the 26th, did you have any practices in that span? Yeah, we, we practiced. Um, we were on the bus going to Indianapolis on the 12th. So the last time we practiced was December the 12th. Now we didn't have, Okay. I think we had our whole group, right? Minus one, one or two. So we really haven't had a practice since December the 12th till December 26th. Did, did you try to maybe push this game back a little bit? Or was there just no way to to do it? No, I really didn't try. I I didn't think it was in our best interest, but I think it was a lot to ask of the league for us to. Now we pushed the we pushed the Richmond game, obviously, which we couldn't play. You know, we didn't right. have any healthy bodies for that game. But this game, we're going to be. The, the The hard part is, is you see these kids that come off the quarantine. You know, the ten days, and like you look in their eyes and you can see they've been sick. Like it's, it's not like anything I've seen before. Like it takes them two, three, four days to even resemble themselves out there. So that's that, like, I, I look in their, I look in their faces and you can, you can actually tell that they've been sick. That's the hard part. So, but everybody at some point is going to go through it to some extent, I think. We, we thought the bubble was going to be safe for us and it, it ended up killing us, really. How many test results do you still have to get back before Wednesday? We tested today. We were all negative. So we've so been, Was that the last we, one before the game? Uh, Brian, we tested again before the game? No, that's the last one before the game. Oh. So we've tested a bunch, though. We've tested almost every day. So I give our people a lot of credit. We've spent a lot of money on it. We've tested every single day. I mean, we could test tomorrow if we wanted. I my my gut feeling is we'll be negative, but we're in pretty good shape. We we followed we we've, we've done three times this week, so we followed all the protocols. But that's that's what I feel badly about is our guys really did a good job with it. We got we got sick in Louisville, so that's the sad thing about it. Keith, you mentioned it being funny, you know, strange or odd playing right now you obviously build a covenant with these players families what do you tell the parents when they're asking you know questions about their kids that's a that's a really good point um look if i didn't think it was fairly safe i'm 62 i'm probably in more harm's way than them you know when it comes to you know if i get sick then i got a battle so I think most of them want to play. I think most of them want their 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 sons to play, but I wouldn't feel I wouldn't hold it against anybody that, that wanted to opt out. I really wouldn't. I, I would understand it. I you know I really would. I have a son that plays. You know that's a 
professional soccer player. And if you ask him, he wants to play, you know, but that's kind of how most of the kids are. They want to play. He talked on a second ago. Um, what's the energy level like at practice of some of these kids who have been sick? Well, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a physical and a mental issue. Like, I, I don't think we've practiced particularly well. I mean, but I haven't felt like we've practiced particularly well throughout because we've been shut down so many darn times. That I feel like we're starting over every single time. If you if you've coached as long as I have, if if after two two after two days off, it's really hard to get them going. Mm -hmm. But we figure we've been off like three different times or four different times, ten days or fourteen days. Like, I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's ridiculous. But then there's other people that say, hey, look, maybe you don't, maybe, maybe we've learned something that we're practicing too much. I don't know. I know I'm not too comfortable because I know we're, there's parts of the game that we're not going to be very good at because we, we can only do so much every single day. So, like late game situations, for instance, that's hard. I'm just trying to get them in shape and feeling good about themselves, really. Simple as that. Uh you how does go, – go, I'm sorry. Uh, Keith, you've talked about how little practice there's been. Um, during all this craziness, your team added Ryan Murphy. Uh, how has he been adjusting with all of this with such little time with the program? Well, I give Ryan a lot of credit. I mean, most people wouldn't have the guts to come into a program that's fairly established in the backcourt, pay their own way to school, and, and basically have to readjust the – you know, make friends with people that you're competing with. So that he loves the game. He's done a good job. He's a, he's he's capable of helping us. There's no question about it. Um, he's just got to learn a lot of things in a short time period, which is which is hard. Coach, um, you mentioned feeling good about. I mean, we and we know this is all mental, but the timing is a thing. How are you working with them? Do you have to maybe get them extra help with the mental aspects of this? That's a really good question. So, uh, you know, we have the sports psychologist, Joe Carr. You know, there's times I think you should talk a lot about it. And then there's other times that you just got to get back in the gym. It's kind of like the, uh, like Top Gun, you know, when he, when he, when he lost his friend, you got to get back up in the plane. And for us, I think that's pretty much what we have to do is we just got to get back on the horse that threw us off. And, um, and then we have to live with the results. Like, you know, I'm a very impatient person, but like, this isn't going to be a quick fix. We're going to have to like work to get better. You know, we're, 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 uh, we're certainly not going to play our best basketball. We're going to try our hardest, but we're just going to have to work to get better and, you know, pay our dues again. And, uh, but I think, you know, the bottom line is, you know, we just got to get back up on that horse. Good. Um, this is one, one more thing. Um, do you think this time has maybe kind of removed some of the cloak and veil? Like, cause some of the answers you gave today were just fascinatingly honest. Um, you think maybe the times and everything just kind of have to make us kind of, you know, stop BSing basically. You know, that's, that's one thing that I've always prided myself on. Thank you, by the way. I, I try not to, I, I was going to swear. I'm not going to swear. I try not to ever like fabricate. I try to be truthful. I think, you know, I think uh, your profession deserves that, right? I try not to coach speak, although obviously we've been coaching so long. Yeah, I think, you know, people need to, need to tell the truth, you know, and really, you know, why not? Like, like I, what I always tell reporters is, look, I know you have a job to do. And, you know, if something happens with our program and it's clear cut, then you should report it. If it's 50-50, because I'm pretty nice to you, be nice to me, right? Like that's kind of how I view this thing. It's a relationship that we need each other, really. I mean, but I also understand that you have a job to do just like I have a job to do. It's just the way that's the nature of this business. So I think people should tell the truth. Now, not everybody can, you know, because they're trying to hold on to their jobs. And, you know, I'm so old that no matter what happens, I'm okay, right? Like, but I, I always try to tell the truth. Marcus is here too, so you guys can grab Marcus if you're done with me. Keith, will Ryan play tomorrow night or Wednesday? I think so. 
I think so. Okay. He's, he's, he's good enough to play. <laughs> All right. I mean, we got to ask, man. <laughs> what happened? Um. Well, I had to get the two taken out just because, you know, it was like dead. So, like, I got to get a new two. So, I'm in the process of doing that right now. I mean, you didn't lose it at practice or anything. It wasn't an elbow or anything like that, huh? No, I actually lost it when I was little, when I was younger. So, I was playing baseball and, like, I didn't see the ball and it hit me in my mouth and it came out. And then they put it back in my mouth and it kind of like died. So, oh, geez. Yeah. What's, what's this month been like for you, Marcus, you and your teammates? You know, practicing, not practicing, no games? Uh, I mean, it's kind of like how it's been all year, just trying to stay ready, um, just stay in the gym as much as possible. I know um, a lot of our guys went home, um, were able to go home for the holidays and stuff like that. So it was good for um, the younger guys to see their family and stuff like that. So it's just been, you know, just trying to stay ready and keep practicing. Marcus, have you or any of your teammates ever talked about opting out? I know that with all the frustration, it could make sense to some that it might not be worth it. Has that ever came across your mind? Um, it, I don't think it's came across my mind at all. Um, I think I'm looking forward to playing the games, um, however many games we get to play. Um, I ain't really heard any of my teammates so much say they didn't want to play um, or really like discuss that or how they're feeling about the season. But I know in my mind, I, I want to play and I'm ready to play. Um, Marcus, you said. Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Nemias. Um, What has been, I guess, the positives, if any, out of the situation? What have you been able to kind of grab on hope to? What's kind of kept you going through all this? Um, Really? Are you asking me, like, personally? Or? Yeah, you personally. Absolutely, yes. Um, Really just the thought of just playing the game. Um, I love playing basketball. Um, No matter if there's fans or if there's not fans, I just love playing basketball, just the atmosphere and everything that surrounds it. So um, for me, it's just the motivation of just playing again and just staying ready. Um, that's probably about it. Marcus, how often do you communicate with your brother and compare the struggles he's facing with his team compared to yours? Do you get to watch him play a lot as well? Uh, yeah, we I talk to him every day. Um, they've actually played a lot of games. Actually, I think they played like seven or eight games. Um, I think they were supposed to have a game coming up and they got canceled just because they had um, some COVID issues as well. So they're shut down. So um, he talked to me a little bit about that. Um, but other than that, um, he's playing really well. So it's been great to see him play after two years. So I'm just happy to see him play. Maybe one year you guys will both get to play at the same time, right? Oh, for sure. That would be a dream come true. Um, I know we played a lot when we were younger, so that would be a dream come true for sure. What is coach's message been through all of this for you guys? Because this is just have got to been not only frustrating, but hard and just so many types of things that you guys have dealt with. What has his message been to you guys kind of throughout all this? Uh, I think his message has been to stay ready. Um, just keep working hard because that opportunity is going to come. We just don't know when it's going to come. We know now when it's going to come, but um, just his biggest message is to stay ready, keep practicing hard. Keep working hard um, just because that time is going to come. Marcus, is there any fear of playing because of COVID? Uh, for me, no fear at all. Um, I know I've seen a lot of a lot of different things. Um, but again, I'm just super excited to play. Um, really grateful to play just because of everything that is going on. So I'm just grateful and excited. Marcus, for you, just given the the opponent that you're facing and what you guys are not at 100%, how difficult is it going to be from a physicality standpoint just trying to compete with these guys given the hardships you guys have endured? Uh, I think it's going to be a very challenging game. I feel like um, for our team, we're up for the challenge, though. Um, I know St. Louis is super physical, um, really good rebounding team. And I know last year um, we had a, a lot of success against them, so um, we're just looking to bring that – success moving forward. But as far as the game goes, we just take it one play at a time and just try to um, 
play the best defense we can. I know um, us playing defense uh, will, will give us a better chance of winning the game. Um, have you, how much thought have you put into, I guess, the travel aspect of, I mean, I know you don't have to plan it because I'm the team plans, but just having to wear the mask the whole flight, have you kind of thought about that or dealt with that whole part of it? Uh, I feel like just wearing the mask now is just a, another social norm. So, you know, you, you get on the bus, you kind of got a social distance and wear the mask or the plane or whatever, um, however we traveling. So I don't really see it um, that, that much of a difference. It's just part of the social norm now. Marcus, we were talking about before the Zoom call started about how much we miss fans in sports. How much do you miss having fans cheer after you have a nice dunk or block a shot? How much does not having fans change your experience while playing basketball? Um, it definitely changes um, the experience uh, just because fans are super important to the game. Um, I know they love watching um, a lot of the action that goes on, on the floor and Again, um, for me, that's part of the love of the game. It's just, you know, you put in all that hard work and you want to be able to showcase it in front of, you know, thousands, a couple thousand fans and just show them what you've been working on and how hard you've been working. And um, just the atmosphere surrounding everything is, is really um, a thrill. So um, they're really big, really important. But at the same time, they're not, they're not out there on the court with us. We're, we're out there on the court. So... Um, if we're bringing the energy out there on the court, um, it'll just make up for for all the fans that's not there. Marcus what's, Marcus, what's the energy level like among your players, especially the ones who've been struck by this virus? Uh, on our team, yeah. Um, our energy, our our everything about us um, has been good so far. Coming back um, through everything we've been through, I think all of our guys are super excited to play again. So I think the level of energy is super high. Um, the enthusiasm is super high. So we're going to see how far that takes us. Um, are you the type of guy, do you enjoy the cheers from the, from the home fans or silencing a road crowd? Uh, me, I love silencing the road crowd. I'm, I'm real big on that. I like being one of those guys that the fans get annoyed at just because you're just everywhere. You're you're trying to make every play, and you know just hearing the fans just, ah, oh, come on, or something like that. That really that's really what gets me going. So I love the I love the road games. And how tough is it going on road? With not I, I know you mentioned not having fans, but how tough is it not having that extra little bit of not having those people there? Talking about a hotel, that whole the whole atmosphere of the fans and. Wanting them trying to stop you, but you still doing what you got to do. Uh, again, it's it's tough, but um, like I said before, if if all if everybody out there, um, I can't even remember how many guys we got on our team, but if all 13, 14 guys, um, are out there giving um a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of energy, it's gonna be able to carry us through. Um, just because you know energy's energy's really important, energy's really big, um, especially going out there trying to play. Um, a full 40 minutes of basketball.